It is uh, now six o'clock. Good evening and welcome to the May 11th New Bern Board of Aldermen meetings. Tonight our prayer will be given by Alderman Odom. Thank you, Mayor. If you would pray with us. Heavenly Father, we thank you for another opportunity to gather together to conduct the business of your city. We ask that you lead God and direct our discussion, our conversation, and decisions. In your name we pray. Amen. Amen. Can we all please stand for the Pledge of Allegiance to our flag? I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Madam Clerk, will you give the um, roll call, please? Alderman Bingle? Here. Alderwoman Harris? Present. Alderman Astor? Here. Mayor Outlaw? Alderman Kinsey? Here. Mayor Pro Tem Best? Here. Alderman Odom? Here. Thank you. Next, we will have a request and petition of citizens. At this time, if you would please come forth, um, Father Thomas Tully, and state your name and address for the record, please. Uh, my name is Thomas Tully. I'm the pastor of St. Paul Catholic Church, 3005 Country Club Road, New Bern. And I have um, uh, a fortuitous um, uh, circumstance with the um, First item on the consent agenda for uh, recognition of Livonia Fraser uh, this afternoon. I had the honor of uh, leading her funeral, and um, I will just give um, share one thought about that um, celebration. Uh, words from my sermon: Heaven just got friendlier and more elegant with her arrival, and I think that would give a good background uh, to the. Um, life uh, and legacy of Livonia Porter Fraser. I'm here particularly though to point out some of the things that um, we did not include in the proclamation for the 200th anniversary of St. Paul Church in New Bern and to um, also invite each of you, Honorable Alderman, to participate in any that uh, you would like uh, to, to know more about. We'll be advertising these things in the coming weeks. Um, it's 200 years ago that on May 24th that Bishop of Charleston arrived uh, in order to gather Catholics together for a future parish. That future parish is uh, the first um, establishment of the uh, institutional Catholic Church, although there were Catholics in New Bern uh, for a uh, half century before that. Uh, the great event of the bishop's r arrival really pulled the people together. And uh, so May 24th is the beginning of a 10-day window that honors uh, Bishop England, John England's visit to New Bern uh, 200 years ago. Um, in particular, we have um, St. Paul Day at Tryon Palace. Uh, we'll have a walking tour of the Catholic sites uh, in uh, and around downtown New Bern. And on June 4th, the day that Bishop England left New Bern to uh, head north to um, what we call Little Washington um, and um, a, establishing a, a church there, uh, Bishop England um, left on the 4th of June. And we have a Friday morning mass at our 180-year-old church on Middle Street. And we will have a procession after that event uh, inviting the Lord's blessing upon the city and county. And so um, the, the uh, prayerful um, uh, example of Catholics across these 200 years 
and um, the legacy especially of the St. Paul Catholic School and the St. Joseph Catholic School on Burn Street are um, really a, an honored part woven into the fabric of our city. And so I'm very proud to um, point that out to you and to um, ask your support and participation, not only of the proclamation, uh, but of the um, events that will be starting at the end of the month. Thank you. Thank you. Next we have uh, Mr. David Beck. Please state your name and address for the record, please. Can I take the mask off? Hi, my name is uh, David Beck, 30G10 Elizabeth Avenue, New Bern, North Carolina, 28562. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen of the board. I've come in front of you to uh, ask you to add an exemption to <clears throat> one of the laws or local uh, ordinances involving livestock. Um, I own a pair of Nigerian dwarves. There is a pamphlet in front of each of you. Um, the Nigerian dwarves are very small goats. They're highly intelligent. They don't need a whole lot of space. They're actually smaller than the two dogs that I seen up front earlier, which I don't have a clue where they went to, but they're tiny. They're not gonna get any bigger. They're um, <clears throat> very sociable animals. Um, they, they don't make very much noise. They're clean, they're healthy. And then I just want an exemption added into the um, ordinance saying that they're livestock when they can be used for pets as well. Thank you for your consideration. Thank you. Scott, what um, do we have and do we know what the um, ordinance is now, right now? I have it right here. Would you like me to read the whole ordinance to you or would you like to? If you give me the, I just want the, the number to do research. It's uh, section 610 under ordinance number 17030. Okay. I can't, I can't read what that is. But it says that I can have a, a pot belly pig within the city limits, but I can't have two tiny Nigerian dwarves. Okay. I'll get, you'll give me his information. What yes. I'll do is I'll get that information and then I'll follow up with our city attorney and then we'll go from there to see what the steps are, if any, that we can do as a board. Um, but I need to do more research on it. Well, Thank you. Um, I did not leave my phone number in there. Okay. Thank, thank you, Mr. Yeah, that piece of paper so you can write a number on it. Did you have a pad? Thank you, Mr. Bett. Uh, Thank you all very much. Y'all have a great day. Next we have Mr. James Woods, Jr. Good evening. James O. Woods, Jr., 1903 Country Club Road. My board of Alderman, Mayor Pro Tem staff. At the last meeting, um, in April, April 13th, the, it was reported that the city is gonna get somewhere in the neighborhood of $6.3 million from the resiliency plan. 
And this month, the city is supposed to get 3.15. I think that's what I figured up. I'm here to ask for some of that money for my neighborhoods. Um, before you spend it all, I'd like to have $750,000 set aside for the Pembroke Community Center and to build a building over in Pembroke. At the last meeting also, at that 13th meeting, the vote, city, the vote center campus was given all to the community college. So, and before it was supposed to be used for a farmer's market for that area, and now that's not gonna happen, which, okay, that's cool, I understand why, but we can do the same thing over in Duffyfield on that slab that's over there. We can put a building just like this downtown for the mar farmer's market over there to allow people to sell their goods or people can rent that space out to have family reunions or weddings or things of that nature. And we should be able to use some of that money from the resiliency plan to do that. Also to repair the community center in Pembroke to bring it up to the standards that's acceptable for the citizens of our great city. If you haven't been over there, it's potholes. You, you, you have to maneuver the parking lot to get to the building. It's potholes there. That needs to be fixed. The roof leaks. I understand that there's a lease between the Pembroke community and the city, but however, I do believe that that building is city property still, so it should be maintained. Okay, if it's not, then give us the money so we can fix it up and not have us scuffling to try to put together a community center that's not worthy of that community. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Before we go into the consent agenda, is there any changes that need to be made? Yes, ma'am. Um, Mayor, Mayor Pro Tem, I'd like to um, request that we move item 14 uh, to the next um, space because we have two service dogs here that we need to let them uh, probably get on their way. Is that your motion? That's my motion, yes. Motion's been made and second. All in favor by saying aye. 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 Opposed as is. Um, Madam Pro Tem, Mayor Pro Tem, um, I also would ask that we um, pull out uh, approving the proclamation honoring the life of Livonia Frazier to be voted on separately from the consent agenda. Um, and I also have been requested by the uh, CEO of Pepsi Beverages to read a letter on his behalf okay. regarding Ms. Frazier. So I make that motion. Second. Motion's been made and second. All in favor of saying aye. 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 Nays pose as is. Um, next, we're going to go into the consent agenda, excluding item number four, and moving item number 14 up after the consent agenda. Approve the ag uh, consent agenda, removing item number four, which is the proclamation um, honoring Ms. Frazier's life, and also that's it, because we already did number 14. Second. <laughs> Motion made and second. Any discussion? If there's no discussion, I'd like to make the motion that we, um, the nays, that we, excuse me? <laughs> I'd like to make the motion that the consent agenda has been approved and second. If there's any discussion, if there's none, let's move forward to. <clears throat> you got the vote on. Oh, gee, that's right. <laughs> let's have, um, let's, I make a motion, the motion was made. Um, let's conduct the vote. Okay, it's a roll call, call started with um, Alderman. Oh, sorry, not, for not consent, it just is make a motion. All in favor by saying aye. 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 Nays have it as is. Um, next. We, we need to discuss the Okay. Uh, next, we have discussion of number four, the proclamation honor Ms. Miss Livonia Frazier. Yes. I'd like to thank the mayor um, and this board of aldermen for to consider approving this proclamation to, tonight, honoring the life of uh, Mrs. Livonia Pat Porter Frazier, uh, who was um, buried today. And Father Tully, it was a pleasure to hear your sermon today. And 
um, the words. It was just a beautiful, moving ceremony for a beautiful woman. Uh, and because she was so special to this city in many ways, um, and just being a loving mother to so many young people and um, just her kind spirit, she also was a pioneer for the African American community. And I've been asked to include this letter this evening um, that came from um, uh, Kurt Tanner, who is the Chief Executive Officer of PepsiCo Beverages North America. And it reads, it's with great sadness that we learned of Mrs. Frazier's passing. She will be remembered by those of us at PepsiCo as an admired trailblazer who pushed boundaries and paved new pathways for future generations to follow. As a pioneer for the African American community, she played a significant role in growing our business, helping PepsiCo reach new markets so many years ago. I was lucky enough to meet Mrs. Frazier and will remain inspired by her legacy. Her presence will always be felt, especially in New Bern, a place so dear to her and where we celebrate Pepsi's heritage, a heritage she helped build. Mrs. Frazier will always be a cherished member of the PepsiCo family, and we are keeping her family in our thoughts and prayers. We pray that they find comfort in the memories they have and be fueled and inspired by her accomplishments. Thank you, and with that, I'd like to make a motion that we approve the proclamation honoring the life of Livonia Frazier. Second. Motion's been made and second. All those in favor by saying aye. Aye. Nays as, as the same. Um, next, we're going to have uh, item number 14, Mr. Stevens. Thank you, Mayor Pro Tem Best. Uh, uh, item number 14 is consideration of the board to adopt a resolution authorizing the transfer of ownership of a retired service animal. Uh, the City of Newburn Fire Department secured an arson canine through State Farm Insurance in August of 2015. Uh, the canine, uh, as y'all know, her, uh, her is Darby. Um, now an eight-year-old mixed Labrador who has reached the end of, their, uh, of her public service life. Uh, it is requested that the board adopt a resolution transferring ownership of Darby to a handler, uh, Fire Marshal Danny Hill. Uh, this is typical of, of most of our service animals, our canines and the police, and this is our first one in the fire department to uh, reach this uh, end of service life. Um, uh, the, the sum for this purchase will be $1 pursuant to uh, NCGS 20-187.4. Uh, Darby will be in attendance tonight, and we also have our new um, uh, service dog in attendance as well, uh, which is her replacement, which will be Bobby, um, uh, is going to be introduced. So at this time, I'm going to turn it over to uh, oh. Chief Boyd, and we're going to introduce uh, retired Darby and introduce the new uh, canine. Thank you. Yeah, like the manager said, we, are, we have been very blessed to have Darby. Darby's been a great dog and a great canine and been a great assistant to the fire department and we're gonna be sad to see her, but Aww. as you can see, he's become very, she's become very accustomed to her family and we hope that uh, you guys approve tonight to be able to transfer that. And I'd like for Fire Marshal Hill to say just a little bit about Darby's history. Thank you, thank you Chief. Uh, Mayor Pro Tem, members of the board, thank you again for allowing us tonight to come before you. Um, it's a bittersweet night for me. Um, this pro um, process started back when Chief Astor was in the, the, the fire chief, and um, it, it was several years in the making. Um, when, I think it was Chief Boyd's first year when he actually took over when we were accepted into the program. Um, with Darby, we have investigated over 100 fires together. Um, and through those, those 100 fires, we have been able to see at least five people arrested and mm -hmm. gone to trial for arson. Um, so <laughs> she has definitely um, done a good job for the city of Newburn. We look forward to the program continuing um, with the new canine. But again, like I said, it is bittersweet because mm -hmm. we spend so much time together. I spend as more time with her than I do with my own family at mm -hmm. home um, because we are together 24 hours a day. So, and she loves Colleen. So. <laughs> <laughs> but again, thank you um, for the opportunity 
for, um, for the firefighters to participate in this program, and we look forward to the future with um, Bobby, the new K-9. Can we interact with her? Can we? Yes, yes ma'am, we can. Come on. Ah, I'm serious. Oh. I think kudos need okay. to go to Fire Marshal Hill also, because he's the one that that's got this all started and brought it to our attention and did all the paperwork and contacts and things like that. So we congratulations goes to him too for getting this program started. Tim, I know we're getting ready to introduce the new dog, Bobby, but uh, before we do that, uh, I'd like to make a motion that we adopt the resolution authorizing the transfer of ownership of retired service dog, Darby, to Fire Marshal Danny Hill. Second. second. Motion's been made and second. All those in favor of saying aye. Aye. Ayes has it, nays as he is. I'm going to ask now, Handler, Fire Go ahead. Yes. I'd like to have, if there's no more discussions, I'd like to have a roll call. Yes? yes. Okay. Yeah, okay. Alderman Dingle? Yes. Alderwoman Harris? Yes. Alderman Astor? Yes. Mayor Outlaw? Yes. Alderman Kinsey? Yes. Mayor Pro Tem Best? Yes. Alderman Odom? Yes. Now I've got the privilege of <laughs> introducing Inspector Jonathan Gaskins is the new handler and his new K-9, Bobby. Oh, I got a text. He, we, I'm going to let him tell you a little bit about the process, but I got a text from him. He was up in New Hampshire, New Hampshire doing the training. I got a text. I want you to meet a new K-9, Bobby. And I said, no, this is a joke, right? <laughs> so now we've had three Bobbies in the fire department. We've had one sitting up there that was a part of the fire department, got another Bobby. Now here's baby Bobby. <laughs> baby Bobby. <laughs> <laughs> Mayor Pro Tem uh, Board, again, thank you for letting us be here this evening. Um, everybody keeps saying we're taking the place of Darby, but we're, we really hope just to be able to follow in her footsteps because we can't replace Darby. So, um, but we did just return from New Hampshire where we were certified as a K-19. Um, and it, it was, they give you, uh, when you get there, they, they get your personalities, the personality is the dog, and they try to match you up with the, the dog that meets your personality. So they give you a little slip of paper that has the dog's information on it. You go in the room, get your dog, and you know, start bonding with your dog. When they handed it to me, I just started laughing, and the instructor said, are, are you okay, son? I said, uh, yes, sir, but um, my fire chief's name is Bobby, so this is going to be interesting. So it, right out the gate, it, it was a lot of fun, but uh, it was a very intense class. It was a five-week class condensed into four weeks, like he said, in New Hampshire, and uh, we learned a lot, and just looking forward to assisting the fire department surrounding areas with uh, fire investigations. Thank you all again Thank for last you. Good job. Need to make a motion on that too. Barbie. <laughs> I get to see her down the line. Congratulations. Thank you. All right. You can go ahead and make a motion on that. What is it we're doing now? Do you have to do that on mm. that? Oh, not on the new one. Okay. Um, Mayor um, Outlaw is present, so I'm going to let him proceed on with carrying on with the meeting tonight. But before I move forward, I'd like to ask the board, because I forgot to ask um, if the board so allows um, anyone that was not present and just came in that wanted to be a part of the uh, petition, request and petition of citizens. If so, you can come forth if the board so allows. Second. Motion's been made and second. I don't think there's anyone here. But I just wanted to extend that, didn't want to admit anyone. Um, I now give the meeting over to Mayor Outlaw. Well, thank you, and I'm sorry I was a little late. I was in a continuing ed class all day on solar energy, of all things. Can you imagine that? And they didn't get out till 6 o'clock. Let's go to I number 11. Item number 11 is a public hearing on the proposed budget for fiscal year 21-22. Uh, 
Uh, as you recall, on our April 27th, 2021 20, meeting, uh, I presented to you a proposed budget for the fiscal year upcoming, which is fis fiscal year 22. Uh, the budget workshop uh, was held on the 4th of May at West Newburn Recreation Center. Uh, public hearing was called for and advertised as required by state statute, so that's where we are tonight. Uh, and uh, we want to hear any kind of comments that the public may have, or if the board has any other discussionary items, we will be happy to address those at that point. Any other staff comments, questions, comments from the board before I open a public hearing? At this time, the, we open a public hearing concerning the ensuing year 2021-22 20, budget. Anybody like to ask any questions, make comments, observations, you're more than welcome to come up at this time. Motion and second to close the public hearing. Any discussion? All in favor of the motion, say aye. 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 All opposed, the same. The motion carries. Is there comments, concerns of, by the board about this item? Under number 11. Any other actions on the part of the board at this time? Uh, workshop uh, that was uh, held on the May the 4th. Uh, so we will try to finalize those numbers, get everything in a budget ordinance, and it will be uh, for uh, your review uh, and consideration at your next board meeting. Okay, let's go to item number 12. Thank you, Mayor. Item number 12 is a public hearing and rezoning of tax parcel ID 8-216-011. Uh, and if the board so chooses to rezone this property, they will first need to adopt a statement of zoning consistency. Um, if they do not, then they will adopt a statement of zoning inconsistency. If the zoning consistency is adopted, we'll need to go to the next step, which is to rezone the parcel. Um, so at this point, I'm going to turn it over to Mr. Ruggieri. He's going to give you a brief synopsis of uh, this item um, and answer any kind of questions uh, that the board may have after the public hearing. Thank you, Mr. Hey, members of the board. Uh, tonight we are looking to rezone parcel 8-216011 from C4 to C3. The applicant, Michelle Lynn, uh, is requesting a rezoning from C4 to C3. Uh, the site is located right there, just south of Kensington Park Drive, uh, across from Bosch. Uh, it's a small site, uh, 0.76 acres. It's currently vacant. C4 zoning, existing zoning on the site right now, um, is a neighborhood business district. It's established to, uh, as a principal use of land, provide the retailing of goods and services that support nearby neighborhoods and also limit uh, non-residential uses that may uh, have a negative impact on surrounding residential areas. The proposed, uh, the proposed zoning is to go from C4 to C3. As we know, C3 is established as a, for offices, uh, retailing. It's our highest intensity commercial district. Um, should be located along major thoroughfares and major radial roads um, that, will, um, that can handle high levels of traffic. Some uses that are allowed in the C3 district is all our, uh, all our residential uses are allowed in C3. That's uh, residential uh, detached, attached, townhome type developments, multifamilies, obviously. Um, Re uh, retail uh, businesses, high volume traffic generations, also restaurants, bars, and nightclubs, specifically carry out service uh, and dine in and dine out uh, um, restaurants um, where you can eat, uh, you can have uh, food served outside of, of, an, of an enclosed building. Where's the picture? Okay. Surrounding uses, you'll see uh, it's a residential. Uh, mostly across the street is the uh, Industrial One, that's the Bosch site. So we have Residential 8, 6, 10, uh, more C4 around the site, more C4 to the, the, to the south. But also, as you can see, there's a little bit of Commercial 3 on the top left corner of your slide up there. Um, that uh, is a smaller parcel, but C3 is available in the area. The uh, CAMA Regional Land Use Plan classifies this area as developed and generally has a high uh, suitability for development. The area is outside the 100 and 500 year floodplains. Uh, utilities are provided by the city. 
Uh, Planning and Zoning Board heard this petition on their April 6th meeting and recommended unanimously that the Board of Aldermen approve this petition to rezone the parcel from C4 to C3. I'll take any questions or you may open up the public hearing. Board, have any questions at this time? Let's uh, open a public hearing at this time. Anybody has any questions, comments, observations they'd like to make about this item? You're more than welcome to come up and do it. Motion and second to close the public hearing. Is there further discussion? Seeing none, all in favor of the motion say aye. 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 All opposed, the same. Motion carries. Mayor, I'd like to make a motion we adopt a statement of zoning consistency for tax parcel ID 8216011. Second. Motion and second. Is there a discussion? Seeing none, let's have a roll call starting with Alderman Odom. Alderman Odom? Yes. Alderman Best? Yes. Alderman Kinsey? Yes. Mayor Outlaw? Yes. Alderman Astor? Yes. Alderwoman Harris? Yes. Alderman Bingle? Yes. Mayor, I also like to make a motion we adopt an ordinance rezoning tax parcel ID 2182160011. Motion and second. Is there a discussion? Seeing none, let's have a roll call starting with Alderman Bingle. Alderman Bingle? Yes. Alderwoman Harris? Yes. Alderman Astor? <clears throat> Mayor Outlaw? Yes. Alderman Kinsey? Yes. Alderman Best? Yes. Alderman Odom? Yes. Motion carries. Anything else on this item at this time? Let's go to item number 13. It's public hearing on the rezoning of 431 North Carolina Highway 55 West. Uh, again, uh, if the board wishes to choose to rezone this property, they would need to adopt a zoning of consistency. Uh, if not, inconsistency. And then if they do the zoning of consistency, uh, then they would need to rezone the property as a second step. I'll turn it over to Mr. Ruggieri. He has a presentation for you again uh, on this rezoning. And we'll uh, answer any questions after the public hearing. All right, thank you. This is a rezoning uh, petition for a uh, property located at 431 uh, Highway 55 West from R20 and A5. It's a split zone site to C4. You'll all be familiar with this one. The applicant, our very own Foster Hughes of Parks and Rec, um, is requesting this rezoning. It's a 7.43 acre site. It's currently um, a, a city park right now. There's a site right there. Um, the split zoning is where the park sits right now is, is R20. Um, the rest of the site is zoned agricultural A5. So A5 uh, is our agricultural district uh, designed to protect the integrity of agricultural uses um, and provide for low density residential development on lots that are five acres in size or larger. Uh, R20 is another rural residential zoning district that we have designed for low density, single family detached dwellings with a minimum lot size of 20,000 square feet. C4, neighborhood business district. Uh, we just went through this one, uh, the previous one. Uh, really just designed to provide neighborhood goods and services for area neighborhoods and residential uh, subdivisions. And again, designed to protect uh, neighborhoods from intrusive or over-intensive commercial type developments. Uses loud in C4, residential, attached and detached. Some low volume traffic generators, uh, mostly um, uh, doctor's offices, dentists, uh, non-drive-through type um, uh, restaurants and also allows for education, cultural, religious, philanthropic, fraternal, union halls, um, lodges, similar uses like that by right in C4. Surrounding zoning, uh, as you can see residential, uh, commercial three across the street, that's Carolina Foundation Repair. Uh, so we have R6, R20, uh, very low density type development and some I2, I1 to the south. Oh, where am I going? Here we go. Okay, utilities are available from city services to the site. Uh, land use plan classifies the area as residential. Uh, according to the regional land use plan, the site has a very high suitability for development. Um, it is located outside the 
100 and 500 year floodplain. Again, PNZ heard this petition on their April 6th meeting and recommended unanimously to approve, uh, to approve the petition to rezone the site to C4, to allow for the construction of the Pleasant Hill um, facility. And that's it. Okay, any questions from the board at this time? Let's open a public hearing on this item. Anybody like to come forward, ask questions, make comments? Observations, you're more than welcome to come up. Mayor, I'd like to make a motion that we close the public hearing. Second. Motion and second. Is there a discussion? Seeing none, all in favor of the motion say aye. 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 All opposed, the same. Motion carries. If there's no more discussions, Mayor, I'd like to make a motion on the rezoning of 431 NC Highway 55 West. Second. You got to say it's consistent. We got to adopt the statement. Okay. Consistency. If you're looking to make a motion to rezone. Um, with with uh, consider adopting a statement of zoning consistency. Second. Motion and second. Is there a discussion? Seeing none. Let's have a roll call starting with Alderman Odom. Alderman Odom. Yes. Alderman Best. Yes. Alderman yes. Kinsey. Yes. Mayor Outlaw. Yes. Alderman Astor. Yes. Alderwoman Harris. Yes. Alderman Beagle. Yes. Motion carries. Mayor, I'd like to make a motion we adopt an ordinance rezoning 431 NC Highway 55 West. Second. Motion and second. Is there discussion? Seeing none, let's have a roll call starting with Alderman Beagle. Alderman Beagle. Yes. Alderwoman Harris. Yes. Alderman Astor. Yes. Mayor Outlaw. Yes. Alderman Kinsey? Yes. Alderman Best? Yes. Alderman Odom? Yes. Motion carries. Anything else on that item? Let's go to item number 15. Thank you, Mayor. Item number 15 is a discussion of and a request for services for Juneteenth. Uh, if you're, as you recall, on our February 23rd, 2021 meeting, uh, Talena Massey made a presentation on the upcoming Juneteenth celebration in Newbern. Um, this discussion is a follow-up to that presentation and request for services. Uh, as an additional aside, uh, there is a information packet that uh, some information was requested throughout the week that Foster has provided as far as the, the uh, proposed cost for uh, the requested services from the city for Juneteenth, as well as uh, some other information, the application packet, so forth and so on. So that's included under a separate cover uh, that's uh, been provided at your uh, dais. Uh, so at this point, I'll turn it over to, um, I guess, Talina, if she's going to come back up and discuss this again. Good evening, board. Good evening. Um, so I just wanted to come and give you guys a brief update about how Juneteenth is going so far and just kind of explain some of the services that we're, um, the community has asked for. Um, so I didn't know this would be such a big task when I talked to you guys a couple weeks ago, but um, I'm happy to report that the city, our residences, our neighbors have all come together with a multitude of events that are gonna happen between June 11th and June 20th. Um, they're gonna start with our New Bern Civic Theater uh, having a, a musical event starting that Friday on the 11th of June. Um, that's going to go till the 13th. On the uh, 12th, or excuse me, on the 11th as well, we'll have our art walk, which will have its Juneteenth theme downtown at the Bank of the Arts. Um, on the 13th, Trinity Chapel will have their fellowship prayer to bless Juneteenth to start off the week. Um, and pardon me, I'm gonna to try to go through this as fast as possible. Um, Monday the 14th is gonna be the Juneteenth podcast to kick off um, the activities that are gonna happen that week and discuss any of the volunteers, businesses, and organizations that have come together to help throughout the week. Um, on Tuesday, we will have our, our health and wellness day for Juneteenth. We'll have fitness with friends in Fort Totten Park starting at six o'clock with Vincent McDuffie and Fit Friends on Deck. They're inviting the community, free event, come out and exercise safely, social distance in the park, uh, followed at 7 p.m. 
with Kayla Ingram and K-Zone Fitness, we're gonna have Zumba in the park for the entire community, free and open to everyone. Um, we have no scheduled events, confirmed events for Wednesday yet, but we're looking for our uh, HBCU community and sororities and fraternities uh, to confirm some of the things that they wanna have going on that day as far as education for them. On Thursday the 17th, Ms. Sharon Bryant will have the African American Lecture Series at 7 p.m. Um, and on the Friday the 18th, the Young Urban Professionals will have their uh, rooftop event, their third annual, uh, on top of Oliver and Cheek. And that's at 7 p.m. Um, that will be a ticketed event. All of this information can be found on the Juneteenth of New Bern website, juneteenthofnewbern.com. Or it can be, uh, you can email the Juneteenth of New Bern at gmail.com to ask for um, any of this information or to volunteer. Um, so then that brings us to the Saturday, um, which would be a culmination of all of those volunteers and all those organizations coming together for the community to have the Juneteenth Festival. We have the, um, and the to kick it off at 10 o'clock in the morning, Mr. Bernard George and the group that is working with the historical signs are gonna have their dedication ceremony that morning. After that, we're gonna have the parade through Duffy Field. We're waiting for confirmation from the Marine Corps Band. I'm hoping, since that was one place I was stationed, that we can work together and um, they'll confirm that they will be walking with us through that parade um, with their band. And at noon, we will kick off the festival throughout Duffy Field. We're working with Foster uh, to um, plan the best way to shut down certain streets in that area, the logistics of that, to make sure that our residents are safe, they're still able to maneuver, but also that our children are safe because we do plan to have bounce houses and chalk art and football combines and uh, basketball tournaments. These are all confirmed events, drum circles and hula hoops and all of the things that will hopefully bring our children out and bring them together uh, throughout the neighborhood. It's very vis visible. Um, and we just need a little bit of support. We're still in the process of fundraising. We're still receiving donations. Yup is taking any donations for this event. And um, we just, what our ask is, after speaking to Foster, uh, is for your assistance with, um, really quick, let me pull this up. We do need help with street closures. Um, we will need assistance as well with a mobile stage. Initially, we had asked for assistance with trash collection, but we will take care of that. There are certain things that we were able to confirm that we'll be able to handle ourselves. Um, obviously, we'll take care of electrical and the, um, the toilet situation, the portable toilets, but we'll need assistance with public safety. Uh, we have confirmed with some organizations that we will have volunteers that will be patrolling throughout the neighborhoods while this event is going on throughout the day. Some pillars in the community and some strong men in the community that will be making sure that things are safe, but obviously we wanna partner with our local law enforcement so that everyone feels comfortable, feels safe, and we see all of our neighbors represented it. Because, I mean, why wouldn't it be great to see our neighbors, law enforcement, military, everyone young and old, out celebrating Juneteenth. And last but not least, we will definitely need help with public safety and fireworks. Um, and this was discussed last time, but um, like I said, the community has really come together from all facets, all organizations, and they're pulling as many resources as possible together, and we would just like to see if we can get some assistance. I know the price tag may seem big, but anything that you can do to help will really help out this, this, this event and make it as wonderful as we know it will be. So, if you have any questions, I'm here. I have a question. Sure. Are you, I'm trying to make sure I'm understanding, are you asking the city to be a sponsor, uh, make it a, a city event? What, what are you looking f from the city to do with Juneteenth? 
I, I like the idea, I like the whole concept, but I'm trying to understand what part that we're going to play and what you're looking for. I'm really looking for a partner. For a partner? <laughs> yes, for a partner with this event. To okay. partner with the community, with the resources that they're bringing, and to help us make it as a quality event as, as we've seen throughout our city. Okay. Are y'all nonprofit? Yup, is the nonprofit that is the fiduciary for this for this year. We have formed a coalition, and going forward for next year, we're forming an official 501c3 for Juneteenth because it is growing and growing every year, and it's becoming its own entity. So yes, we will be a nonprofit, but we've partnered with nonprofits to ensure that we can uh, make some of these things happen. So, Talene, I just want to yes. understand, too, is the ask you're asking just for the Saturday event or the whole week? Saturday. Okay. I just, I, I'm, I apologize. I went through the entire week just to kind of show you guys the culmination. I mean, just everything, all that this is entailing. But the and this is going to be, is exactly. Saturday. So this is going to be the culmination of all those events and all of those that, that work is, is from Saturday, the Saturday festival. And that will be from 12, hopefully from 12 to 8 because we'd like to have the fireworks in the evening, dusk time, so that's when we'd be wrapping that up. So you're looking for participation from the city on Saturday? Yes, sir. So, so what part are you looking for the city to play on Saturday? To help support the festival, those- In what way? Those services. In what way? What, what departments are you looking to pull from? Okay. Um, so basically, um, the, the Juneteenth of New Bern um, Coalition has partnered with the Young Earth Professionals to be the fiduciary. Um, and what we are trying to do is Juneteenth started off on a day, we're at a week, we have a festival, and we would like for the city to partner with the Juneteenth of New Bern to help with the Saturday festival. Um, after getting the breakdown, because we were trying to be similar to how Mumfest is, after getting the breakdown, and understanding that this is our first year actually being a full festival, we need to hone in on street closures and that's why the time and the police officers became so much. So we obviously do need street closures. We're gonna work with Foster. We have a meeting set up um, this week to finalize what the closures are gonna be mm -hmm. so that it's conducive to the community and conducive for the city. We do need a mobile stage. So we are asking if the city, they are asking if the city can be a sponsor in regards to donating the stage for that time for us to be able to have um, the acts and stuff that will be on stage. Um, obviously we um, have to pass through the electrical costs to the different booths, um, but to get a better understanding of this, if are we being, would, would, would the individuals be charged $600 per location to have that drop down? Because this is our first time doing a festival, so we're trying to understand. So they, uh, the Juneteenth committee has requested four drops. We currently have power at Henderson Park, so that's not an issue. But they have requested uh, four different locations for power. And so in my conversations with Charlie Bouchard, basically that's a $600 uh, fee to set up the service. And let's see, let me pull the rest of this. $600 fee per drop for the service. They estimate the, the cost of the power is approximately $300 for the amount of time in use. Uh, also, a panel would have to be built for this. We do not have panels that would fit this type of drop, and so the panel cost is approximately $400. Okay, so we once we have a meeting to finalize what the closures are and how we're gonna be able to um, put put the booths out, because what we're trying to do is we understand this is our first time, so we're trying to work, but we also need help. We want to be successful. So obviously we need to come back on the next meeting for the 25th um, to discuss what, what that would look like. But honestly, we, we need the stage and we want to be able to have fireworks and we want minimum police there because we want to be able to utilize the community for community policing. We know that we need it because of, of 
how big the event is going to be. But honestly, the fireworks in a stage is definitely something that we want. That's going to be that's going to help us be successful. We've partnered with Craven Terrace Preservation Management. They're going to allow us to use the big field to be able to put the stage there. We're going to have the combines over at Henderson Park, and the the vision is to be, have closed off round the corner of Roundtree to Broad, all the way down Broad, going down Miller. You meet over by Chapman that area, and it's kind of going to be that L. I have, so go ahead. I have a question for Foster. Foster, if we have another group, let's say within the next six months to a year, that would have a vision just like this year, but not as great as this vision here, how do the costs work for everybody? Uh, I'm just trying to get an understanding because this is a good concept that they have in place, but I'm just trying to make sure that no one else would come in and want the same thing because you have to treat everybody equal, you know, because, I mean, everybody raises their own money. I don't know if it's for profit, nonprofit. I, I don't quite understand all that right now, but I'm just trying to understand that uh, the services that the city provide, how is that done? Can you explain that to me? So currently by city ordinance, we have what's called city-sponsored special events. And off the top of my head, there are about 14 or 16 city-sponsored events that, that the city currently provides in-kind services to, for example, uh, public safety, uh, trash collection, street closures, and things like that. Uh, that ordinance was actually established back in 2012. Um, I think before that time, uh, folks would come up to the aldermen and ask for, for funds for, for their events and activities, and, and then whatever happened at that time, you decided to go with the city-sponsored event route and select certain events. But since this time, uh, we have had quite a lot of applications for special events throughout the city. Um, we don't get requests often for in-kind services from the city, but when we do, it's up to the Board of Aldermen to determine whether or not you want to um, deal with that or not. The most recent thing we've had was uh, the Wall That Heals, where, where that group came to uh, the Board of Aldermen and asked for bus transportation. And so you looked at that and decided to approve that. Ultimately, they didn't have enough uh, in attendance to warrant the bus service, so that was not offered. So it's really a case-by-case -case basis if the event organizer asks for something like that. What was that ticket item number? For which thing? That the, what was the, the cost of that? For, for of that, the Wall the Hills, uh -huh. uh, that was approximately, curious. I think it was approximately $600. Four to six hundred dollars off the top of my head. What is the item for this event here? So based on the application we received last week from the Juneteenth committee, and, and we had to look at everything based on the hours that, that they uh, wanted to have this, the ticket cost is approximately $22,000. That includes uh, sponsorship of fireworks, which they had requested, as well as electrical. Now, based on the conversations that I've had with the committee in the last day or so, they're, they're definitely looking at shrinking uh, the, 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 the festival zone. And so we're, when we have a meeting later this week, we'll have a better idea of a dollar amount of really what they're looking at. But as of right now, that's the $22,000 ask. Uh, are we, uh, is Mumfest a city-sponsored event? Mumfest is. what's the total on that that we do? So I could not tell you right now what that, dollar amount is that we spend in terms of, 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 of services for that. Is it more than six hundred? Dollars? Yes. Oh most likely. Is it yes. less than twenty two thousand? Um I could not tell you without getting that information. It, it sounds like correct me if I'm wow. wrong, but the the plan for the street closures are somewhat fluid. Yes. That's could, why this looks like that. <laughs> could could you have you considered using Broad Street? Because Charlie, if we have light poles there do we have electrical service that could be pulled from that instead of having to run that, new power so that's exactly what foster was saying so but we wanted to make sure that we got on here so that you guys knew that's why we're going to update the street closures because we were trying to 
not if you don't understand how to do a festival with closing the streets, it could be crazy. So we had to hone in today on that. So we are use, we want to use Broad Street because we have private property that we own that we'll be able to utilize for festival. And the, the other thing too, do do the light posts down Broad Street have the flag hanger? I can't remember honestly. The five points, um, five points rising flags are on those poles mm -hmm. now. Some of the light poles uh, throughout town do have a convenience outlet on them or a way to get convenience power um, available. Uh, there's none in this location that they're asking for, and I believe what they're asking for is a metered service where they can plug vendors into, a lot of vendors, um, and distribute goods, sell goods. So I don't, I don't think a convenience outlet would be enough power for what they're looking for. Okay, and then my, my last question on the, the light poles with the flags, what, what's the process that you can let them know that they could sell the banners to help fundraise? I don't know, your event's only in a few weeks, but I don't know if you have enough time to get a manufacturer to actually make the flags, but you could sell those for sponsorships, which is what oh, really? I didn't other know folks do, which would help offset some of the costs. That's awesome. I got a question. Awesome. Anywhere. Question for you on the stage: Did we not adopt? Is the stage rental in our um, ordinance for fees? <clears throat> yes, sir. Currently, the stage rental is two thousand dollars per day, plus uh, the hourly rate for two staff members, which is thirty-five dollars per hour from the start of the event until the end of the event. And that's an ordinance, correct? That is, yes. Okay. And um, what is the? the fireworks have y'all have you guys considered trying to get a sponsor for the fireworks because that's can be very expensive and not only does it the cost of the fireworks but you have to have a certified person to yeah, shoot the fireworks who, off plus you have to have insurance and everything else too yeah so we we are working on sponsorships we actually have um a sponsorship out to um, Minji's to be the title sponsor of the event um and we are working on that the whole point of this is that we're we're doing the foundation the legwork but eventually we want the city to, to make this a sponsored event because uh -huh. again with the juneteenth like i said last year this is you know history this is is what it is for you know african americans this is what their fourth of july is we we talked to foster we worked it down to where you can have 10 to 15 minutes of fireworks for the five thousand dollars and then whatever the cost is so if this year, as a partner, we can do in kind the mobile stage and the fireworks, we would like to be able to come next year or at the end of this year to be added as a city sponsored event where I've spoken to Foster. I don't think he said he's gonna have any issues with partnering with the coalition to do all of the, kind of how, how Mumfest is, but we need assistance this year. We're asking for assistance, we're asking for, in good faith that you guys can give us assistance so that this officially can be a good event. So if we could do in kind the, the, the fireworks and the stage, we're gonna figure everything else, but we need, we need help, we need Who sponsored your fireworks last year? We paid for them. We did them at the Omega Center. We, we went to South Carolina and, and everything we paid for. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, sorry <laughs> but it's it's something that has grown and we have um, a change.org out there we have signatures we have the community not just five points but we have all of New Bern and Craven County that are signing it in support of it and we're just asking that if you guys can be in support of the in-kind donation of the mobile stage and fireworks and when we come back, we'll be able to negotiate the police service. But we're, will we're willing to pay for stuff. We're getting sponsorships. We understand that we're going to have to pass through electricity, but we just want the opportunity to be successful. So, uh, um, Harris, are you asking for some directions maybe to make? Um, yeah, asking directions or, um, I mean, I'll motion. make a motion. If I can, I just speaking. You're still involved with yes. you know, your and I'm gonna um, you're a board member? Yes. Mm -hmm. So Mr. Attorney, should she be recused from this? Um, no. It, it's it, it's not a conflict um, to, to be involved in, in a community activity. Thank um, you. Yeah, that, that's but if the city's funding an event as long, that, as, as, long as there's no profit involved. No. Then, okay. then, uh -uh. Then that's this is fine. a Saturday yeah. event yeah. that is for the community. The only 
one question that I have, um, and I think this is a great idea. I, I would say that I would love to see it on Broad Street just because it would invite all of New Bern yes. to attend, which I think all of New Bern, this is a great opportunity for all of us to come together and having Broad Street very visible there with Corey's property. I mean, I think it just makes it very visible for everybody to use. And I think it's a, a great stepping stone to, to create a great festival going yes. ahead. You know, um, when MUNFA started, it was two blocks, the two blocks of Middle Street, and that was it. Right. And it took many years to right. get up to where there's 80 to 100,000 people that come through over a two-day period. Um, the only issue that I see, I, I don't have an issue with the um, uh, stage because again that's something we own we're not taking cash or whatever the fireworks because we'd have to pay mm -hmm. and we don't write a check or we don't give cash to any other organization mm -hmm. um and so that would be my only hold up in in doing that but as far as the services of police or using the stage whatever i think this is good if we can create something good that all of new Bern can benefit from and i would i would be supportive of that I just, if we start doing five thousand dollars for but you're fireworks, not giving us the money. It would. That's the whole point of it becoming a city sponsored event. Yeah, but event we wouldn't so be. We wouldn't buy fireworks for anybody else. That would be something but they would fundraise. But, but, but the thing about it is, is we do the Fourth of July, which but that's is, a city event. But it's also the Fourth of July, which is freedom. This is Juneteenth, which is the freedom for African Americans. We're talking about equitability. And this is something that the African-American community, black and brown and everybody have come together and created. And that's the reason why I'm saying we want this to be a sponsored event because this is history. This is not something we just are making up. No, I, and I'm not, and so I'm not arguing with that. What is, I'm saying then, take the funds you were gonna use one place to pay for your fireworks and then you're gonna have the benefit of not having to pay for potentially police or other services so that you're the saying city. instead of paying instead of doing the fireworks you're saying that you're willing to cover the public safety and well what whatever we do as far as exchange services that we give for city sponsored events i i mean if if it's going to be that and which we have the list of events how we do that that's what we do we provide services and then they fundraise for other things that they need I'll you charge that. you charge services you know i guess you're going to charge booth rentals or whatever so maybe from your booth rentals you could pay the um the fireworks you're going to be taking those funds in i don't know how many booths you plan on having but um from there you would be able to do that i'm just make i'm just trying to make the suggestion it's not i'm totally for what you're trying to do i think it's a it's good the first, first step. step i'm i'm willing, first step. i'm willing to take it do you have any any you, questions go ahead i just got is this a mistake are you attendance not to exceed 300 people well we have to put because of the um executive order outside how many people can like I thought I there's a, a, we're just being <laughs> I mean, we put numbers on there just because of the current executive order when the application is submitted. Is so, that correct, Foster? As of right now, the current executive order is groups of up to 200 outdoors. So I could have a group of 200 people right here, and right over here I could have another group of 200 and another group of 200. So, so it's pointless. basically it's, it's how it's, it's pointless interpreted. number to begin with. So. Right, it is. that you wanted to get back with Foster so that y'all can look at these numbers and sort of downsize this uh, estimated cost? Or, you know, I know your event is next month. That was so. based on street closures, which is a, a totally different subject. Okay. But um, if, if we're going to, if you're gonna support in regards to like how, you know, being the whole process, what the city does, like um, Alderman Bingle was saying, I would like to go ahead and, and solidify that today that you guys are in support of the help in regards to city services. city services. I guess you would come back though and bring it because you may not, if your footprint changes, you won't need <clears throat> as many services right. as that. Exactly. So exactly. again, that's all dependent. That's why I say you're gonna come back once you discuss this with fostering, you're gonna have a different cost here so everything will change. But I understand if this is something, you know, how you want to bring this back to the next board meeting 
which would be May the May the twenty the May May twenty fifth May twenty fifth meeting. I think you think that's kind of cutting it a little close for us to be able to ask for approval on some of these things, or should you want to go ahead and take a direction tonight and move forward with this? Because like uh, Alma Binga said, I don't have a problem with the services that we render to y'all. Well, I don't yeah. either. Yes. I, th I think if we can be in support and I'll make the motion for the services and then yes. we come back and let you know what it is. Yes. But it's, it's not gonna be, it's gonna be less than this because we've, this, this is a great cause, this, this is a great cause, because this is a first step that I'm seeing, even with your event last year, of bringing community together for all ethnic groups. Mm -hmm. this, this is a great cause, and I'm, I totally support you. I appreciate it, it's, it's not me, it's the community, I'm just. Well, you're part of it, and, and so is Ms. Uh, Massey. Yes. Foster, have we, have we had the opportunity to, to rent that stage to anyone so far? I'm just concerned that if we... No, the stage has not been rented yet. We actually used the stage for the first time a few weeks ago. Our next time will be actually this Friday night if you'd like to attend the Footloose on the New Summer Concert Series starting at 6.30 p.m. I, I, I would like to just say that, you know, we could give a, you know, yes or no to, not necessarily in a vote of support to Alderman Harris going forward to planning with Foster and really, so we could get some hard numbers and facts because it, based on the services and everything that, that she needs, it could be a far less number and it could be based on funds that she could raise, she, she could pay towards these other things. And I think that she may find by bringing it down and getting a better idea for electric, if they do move the footprint, that you could use some electric that's in the polls, again, without knowing how many vendors you you confirmed, without, knowing you know the size of the space are your booths eight by eight or ten by ten and just different things like that i think those are the questions you have to answer and it'll help us but i guess maybe with a show of hands we can see who's supportive of the event we just need more details it's difficult without knowing exactly what their footprint is going to be also i de i definitely want, want to make sure that we can approve the the mobile stage we're raising money but if we can support the, the mobile the stage, stage i mean that's two thousand dollars yeah <laughs> i mean well if, and it, it, again it's not having to put pull out right you're not pulling out so i'm okay with that i like to make a motion that we approve that we can utilize the mobile stage for the Juneteenth of New Bern Festival on June 19th of this year. Second. And second, it, it, is that just the one item that we're- Right, because I'm gonna come back on the 25th after meeting with Foster and, meeting with Foster and let you know what the street closures and everything are. Okay, uh, any questions, any discussions about that? We're not asking tonight for this to be a city-sponsored event. That, that requires an ordinance change. Right, no. Right. We have, what, no. what the ask is, is is the board now willing to, to, to take ad hoc requests to and waive get the fee. and waive the fee for this for the, the stage itself? Um, From now on out. Yeah, well, it's, it's, con it's contrary to our fee schedule, um, which, yeah, which, does, which does raise an issue as to how we square that. Um, <clears throat> And I don't have a good answer sitting here right now. Well, let me help you with that answer. About two years ago, we started talking about a mobile portable stage. We were going to spend, Sabrina, right. 40, 60,000 on a permanent stage that, that could flood on, mm -hmm. on for time immemorial at Union Point. And some of the aldermen got to talking about it. And with the advent of the Rock Quarry, Mark Marietta, Lawson Creek, Union Point, Dove Fest, Juneteenth, things that were mutually beneficial to the health and well-being of our community, we bought a stage. And I'm chagrined, other than the fact that we have COVID-19, that we haven't used it much. Now, to me, um, first litmus test of it was Easter. And we had not adopted an ordinance, but I had a group that wanted to use the stage for what I thought was a pretty, pretty uh, beneficial citywide event at Union Point, and 
Uh, they wound up having to get a stage and four people to do it from Atlanta, Georgia for $3,000 because we didn't have an ordinance. And, you know, <clears throat> these are these difficult decisions that elected officials make. And, and in my book, this is a perfect example of when particularly what's going on in this country, in this state, and more particularly in Elizabeth City right now, anytime we get an opportunity to lift up our fellow New Bernians, I think we ought to be putting the stage up and using it. As long as it's um, something, it's, you know, like there was an event I went to Saturday night, had absolutely nothing to do with um, this type of an event. It was, a, it was kind of a private event, a fundraiser, uh, a great cause. But that one I would have to look at a little different. This one and others like Duff Fest and things like that, if we're not going to use the stage, let's just put it on gov deals and get rid of it. But I'm ready to start using it myself. Does that mean you're in support? Well, I, we have to vote on it. One might consider, um, you know, the fee schedule applicable to, to uh, private events, uh, private parties, private events, ticketed events. Um, and have an exception for uh, events that are open to the public generally um, and then not have. We, we can that, get there a, later, but we do have a motion second. And um, is, is any other aldermen have any questions, comments at this time before we do a roll call on this item? Let's have a roll call starting with Alderman Bingle. Alderman Bingle? Yes. Alderman Astor? Yes. Alderwoman Harris? Yes. Mayor Outlaw? Yes. Alderman Kinsey? Yes. Alderman Best? Yes. Alderman Odom? Yes. Motion carries. Uh, next item. I got item number 16 is a resolution approving the sale of 115 Hillmont Road. Uh, as you recall, at our March 9, 2021 meeting, the board adopted a resolution to initiate the upset bid process for 115 Hillmont Road after receiving a bid of $7,500 from Sandra Rogers. The parcel is a vacant half acre lot. <laughs> Tax value on the lot is $15,000. The property was acquired by the city and the county in May of 2019 through tax foreclosure. There were unpaid taxes at that time of $6,349.65. Uh, this offer from Ms. Rogers was advertised, but no upset bids were received. Uh, if the property is sold for the initial bid, the city is projected to receive $3,244.62, and the county is projected to receive $4,255.28 from the proceeds. There's a memo that's included from your packet uh, from Ms. Blanco uh, that's attached um, and the tax card and also pictures of the property. Happy to answer any questions. More have questions. Mayor, if there's no questions, I'd like to make a motion to adopt the resolution approving the sale of 115 Hillmont Road. Second. Motion and second. Is there a discussion? Seeing none, let's have a roll call starting with Alderman Odom. Alderman Odom? Yes. Alderman Best? Yes. Alderman Kinsey? Yes. Mayor Outlaw? Yes. Alderman Astor? Yes. Alderwoman Harris? Yes. Alderman Bingle? Yes. Motion carries item 17. Thank you, Mayor. Item number 17 is a resolution authorizing the city manager to ne negotiate and execute a contract with Wither Withers Ravenel for resiliency consultant services. The city received a $328,500 grant from the North Carolina Office of Recovery and Resiliency uh, to provide support related to residency, community recovery, and mitigation in the wake of Hurricane Florence. An RFQ was issued on the 17th of March, 2021 for consultant services to aid the city with uh, residency, recovery, and mitigation projects. There were five responses that were received and scored. Withers Ravenel was identified as the most qualified firm. It is uh, proposed that the city manager be authorized to enter into negotiations and execute a contract with this firm. There's memos included from Ms. Olin Salen, community economic development manager, uh, and uh, the scoring, and we're happy to answer any questions that you may have uh, regarding this matter. You have anything to add to that? Uh, no, sir. That covers a lot of it. I'll be happy to answer okay. any questions that you have. Um, I kind of reviewed over <clears throat> that right much, and of course the um, the hourly wages are, uh, wages are very interesting, but uh, this is all under the grant, and. Um, <clears throat> Uh, we have so many things going on. I, I just have a couple questions. Maybe the board would like to ask some questions off of my questions. Will this group tie in with um, community rating and in any way help that in any way? I, I'm just going to go through a few things. What, how could this help community ratings system? 
Absolutely, or not. you you bring up a good point. Um, this um, contract will start um, <clears throat> as we are finalizing our resiliency and hazard mitigation plan, which will, um, you know give us a lot of potential solutions or next steps to help everything from um, improving our uh, CRS status, um, you know, doing different planning, engineering of different projects. Um, so basically just helping staff with capacity to execute all of the recommendations that are coming out of our resiliency plan. And how does this tie in with the collider study? With the what? The collider group study. Is that, I mean, is there any duplication or? Oh, yes. Um, so, I mean, we have another consultant that is the, the lead, uh, Moffat and Nickel, on the resiliency plan. Um, so that is a contract that, a project we're completing right now. Um, we will then have the document and recommendations where the next step will be, t you know, prioritizing um, that plan will prioritize, so we'll take different pieces and action steps and start moving forward. So this consultant could very likely work on some of those projects or other resiliency-related projects that we identify. And, you know, as was the case with the community rating system, we had quite a few properties we had to get up to a certain standard before we could get back into that program. So. The number one thing that I see that we could be helping our New Bernian residents is cheaper insurance premiums. I, I know of some very personal situations, well, not personal, but friends of mine that, you know, have $2,400 to $3,000 worth of premiums that would pop out vents and other mm -hmm. systematic vent systems, um, they can get them reduced to 400 bucks or something. The problem is the process, the, the, the physical identification of the existing property, um, an array of 10 different certified vent systems um, from a one to one to a two to one, depending on the vent itself and the engineering and the stamping behind it. Um, so where a house might have to have six pop outs to qualify for that much cheaper rate um, depending on um, which one you get off the internet and which engineer puts the blue ink on it as to what you can get your rate down. Well, when you get past that, then the installation phase, then the recertification phase by the surveyor, the PE, and the final filling out of the insurance information with the insurance company and their acceptance of it and the drop. Now, I'm just saying all this. That's $2,000 a year, 10 years, that's $20,000 we can save our citizens' premiums. And so having said that, the one thing I see kind of lacking, we're doing a great job of, of doing these grants and things and getting this research and preparing for the future weather patterns. But um, from all of this, when the dust settles, and we have all of these studies up there on that cabinet right there, um, are we going to be able to find some grant money with Margaret or, or somewhere as to where we can for, for our citizens that maybe can't afford that vent process of $800, $2,000, whatever that would be? Are we going to be able to figure out all this where we can get pulled with some money of some sort to assist our citizens into retrofitting their homes to get them insurance premiums down? Um, I with this don't really specifically else. know if they're, you know, off the top of my head, if there are funding sources that would help fund individual residents to make improvements on their, their own individual properties. However, sources like this can help with some of the education, outreach, and connecting to resources to make sure people understand the process. There are, you know, certain things within the CRS program as far as education, workshops, things like that, that we can facilitate as a city, which does help the rating system. I'm not aware of necessarily a funding source that does exactly what you're talking about, but by having um, you know, consultants or partnerships such as these, it is very likely that we can work with some of our other partner agencies to try to identify what that pathway may look like. And you know, it, it may be possible that there are funding sources that could help private 
homeowners um, that we could help identify, um, but this isn't necessarily a program okay. that could do that. Well, again, reading through the information, I saw there were quite a few PEs in that list of that resume list, so I didn't know if possibly with this study, if possibly some of their I, I don't know how many of those folks are going to be coming to Newburn, but there's quite a few people in your information here. Could they possibly have those seminars, uh, or is that out of the scope of what this will do to assist our, our residents to figure out the least cost, costly means by which to fix their homes for uh, For premiums? example, one of the things we've identified as a, you know, first next step would be rolling out resiliency toolkits, um, you know, especially targeting our um, most distressed and vulnerable neighborhoods within the city, which would sort of be the steps for individuals as far as what they could take to be better prepared. Um, you know, making sure that they have flood insurance, um, you know, or understand, you know, the very things that you're, you're talking about. Um, so that's one example where, um, you know, this group could help us do that. Um, and then there are other programs as far as seminars or, um, you know, setting things up or, you know, there are things that we can do at a very low cost basis, maybe in, in house to invite, you know, entities such as FEMA or NFIP to execute those type of seminars that you're talking about, which would be one of the first steps toward continuing to improve our CRS rating. Okay, well, that's all questions I'm going to ask. Board have questions? On the fact of having this and then in regards to, you know, being able to help our citizens, you know, you, you can have all of these things that we're doing which are good, the education, but if there's not a pot or if there's not a resource that's going to actually help the individuals that are getting educated, it's kind of, I understand where you're coming from, so I do, I do agree. Uh I did want, and Jeff might have to answer this one, and it, it maybe will fall into this, maybe it won't. It, with what I just said about all them, those uh, vent systems, pop-outs and all, if you have an encapsulated crawl space system, obviously that's, that's not letting anything in. Uh, and, and I know a lot of inspection departments are promoting encapsulated crawl, crawl space systems, but you can't have the best of both worlds. If you're in a flood area, do we as a city, do we promote encapsulated crawl space areas or, or we have to go along with the pop-out vents? Could you elaborate on that? Yeah. Well, as, far as, as far as the CRS program um, and what we went through to, to, to get into that, um, encapsulation isn't an option in, underneath uh, uh, base flood elevation. It's, uh, there's construction standards associated with it, one of which is, uh, is, is the vents. You can waterproof, which is a little different than encapsulation. There's a different uh, engineering, you know, it's whoever puts the blue stamp on it and says it's waterproof, that is always an option. But uh, yeah, that's a good question. We, we stuck with the vents because we really can't find uh, the, the technology associated with uh, waterproofing is not really tested. Um, and it's, there's really no, uh, uh, no standards to follow at this point in time, it's, it's whatever. A, uh, a civil stamp at this point, and, and we'll, we'll take that. Um, but there are definitely standards that uh, that we have to follow when we go when we're trying to stay in. Now that we're in the CRS program, we have to stay to strict guidelines and monitor um, our activities. So, is it is it the policy of the city if it's in a flood prone area that you can't have an encapsulated crawl space with a? I don't know. It's not it's not a policy. We, we are open up to every every option. It's just that most people can't find. Um, uh, the, the people to, to engineer, um, you know, the waterproofing okay. and, the, and the materials and everything that's needed. Okay, thank you. Board, have any questions? To adopt a resolution authorizing the city manager to negotiate and execute a contract with Withers Raven. How do you say that? Ravenel for resiliency um, consult. Consult services. Second. Motion and second. Is there discussion? Seeing none, let's have a roll call starting with Alderman Bingle. Alderman Bingle? Yes. Alderwoman Harris? Yes. Alderman Astor? Yes. Mayor Outlaw? Yes. Alderman Kinsey? Yes. Alderman Best? Yes. 
Alderman Odom. Yes. Motion carries. Item number 18. Hey, Mayor, item number 18 is a resolution to approve the 21-22 CDBG Annual Action Plan. Uh, this uh, plan serves as the city's application for funding under the Entitlement Cities Program. It also provides a summary of the actions, activities, and specific federal and non-federal resources uh, that will be used uh, for priority needs and specific goals that are identified in the strategic plan. Um, at this point, I'm going to turn it over to Amanda. She wants to uh, detail a little bit further about how all that money is going to be spent, uh, and then uh, we'll answer any questions you may have. You will remember from our last meeting, we held a public hearing and I made a presentation on how those funds will be spent, um, which activities we will plan to complete uh, this upcoming program year. Um, as outlined, 20% will go toward admin, which will be uh, $52,973 this coming year. Um, we have planned for $125,000 to go toward housing rehabilitation, which will be a partnership with the Redevelopment Commission. And then finally, to continue the um, Duffy Field Enhancement, uh, Stormwater Enhancement Project, there will be $86,893 uh, to further engineer and permit that for the next phases of construction. I'm happy to answer any questions that you have. Our total okay. allocation is $264,000. I cannot say numbers tonight. <laughs> 264,866. Uh, My apologies. <laughs> Got tongue tied there. Mayor, I'd like to make a motion that we adopt the resolution to approve the 2122 CDBG annual action plan. I think we've been talking about this for the last four months, it seems like. <laughs> so it's time to move along. <laughs> Motion and second is there discussion. Seeing that, let's have a roll call starting with Alderman Odom. Alderman Odom? Yes. Alderman Best? Yes. Alderman Kinsey? Yes. Mayor Outlaw? Yes. Alderman Astor? Yes. Alderwoman Harris? Yes. Alderman Beagle? Yes. Motion carries. I'm number 19. Thank you, Mayor. Item number 19 is uh, consideration of the board to adopt a resolution to approve a contract with Thompson Price, Scott Adams and Company, uh, PA, for the fiscal year 2021 audit. Uh, the board previously selected the firm to perform the city's audit. Uh, the firm performed the audits in fiscal year 19 and 20, uh, and the proposed contract is for fiscal year 21 at a cost of $34,000. $500. This includes all the major programs and is the same as last year's cost. Uh, this is the final year of three year per, uh, uh, term that we had with them uh, and it is the intent of staff uh, as we always do to, to uh, rebid that next year unless uh, directed to do differently by the board. Board have questions. Mayor, I make a motion we approve a contract with Thompson Price, Scott Adams and Company PA for FY 2021 audit. Second. Motion second. Is there a discussion? Seeing none, let's have a roll call starting with Alderman Bingle. Alderman Bingle? Yes. Alderwoman Harris? Yes. Alderman Astor? Yes. Mayor Outlaw? Yes. Alderman Kinsey? Yes. Alderman Best? Yes. Alderman Odom? Yes. Motion carries. Item number 20. Thank you, Mayor. Item number 20 is a resolution approving a contract with Craven County Board of Education for school resource officers at specific elementary schools. Um, February the 25th of 2020, the board adopted a contract with Craven County Board of Education to provide school resource officers at J.T. Barber Elementary School and Oaks Road Academy School for the period of January 1, 2020 through December the 30th of 20, or 31st of 2021 or 2020. Excuse me. Uh, the SROs uh, there have remained in place for the second half of the school year. Uh, so therefore, we need a contract for the remaining six months of this school year. Uh, as you recall, you made a decision to allow the SRO. Uh, uh, officers to be taken over by, I guess the responsibilities to be taken over by uh, the Sheriff's Department, uh, but this will only be for the six months that we're currently in right now. Uh, so basically we're already in that, but this memorializes that so that we receive that payment. Happy to answer any questions. If there's no questions, I'd like to make a motion to adopt a resolution approving a contract with Craven County Board of Education for school resource officers at Pacific Elementary School. Second. Motion and second. Is there discussion? Seeing none, let's have a roll call starting with Alderman Odom. Alderman Odom? Yes. Alderman Best? Yes. Alderman Kinsey? Yes. Mayor Outlaw? Yes. Alderman Astor? Yes. Alderwoman Harris? Yes. 
Alderman Bengal. Yes. Motion carries. Item number 21. Yes. Moving forward, the Sheriff's Department is taking over, and the public knows that. Right? Okay. Thank you. Yes, ma'am. Uh, thank you, Mayor. Item number 21. Uh, last order of business uh, for the night. Uh, resolution to approve a change order with Trader Construction Company for Trent Village Hurricane Florence Category D project. Uh, this uh, uh, There was a resolution that was approved by the board on the 23rd of February authorizing the city manager to execute this contract with Trader Construction uh, for the work. Uh, during the five months between the bid date and the issuance of the award, the cost of construction for steel has increased, so there's a change order that is requested in a, that will increase the amount of the contract by $13,455 uh, to cover the rise in the cost of the uh, steel sheet piles that uh, uh, they needed to do the work. So uh, there's a uh, packet in your, uh, or I'm sorry, there's a memo in your packet from Mr. Chai we're happy to answer any questions. Board have questions. Mayor, I'd like to make a, res um, a motion to adopt a resolution to approve the change order with the Trader Construction Company for the Trent Village Hurricane Florence Cat D project. Second. Motion and second. Is there a discussion? Seeing none, let's have roll call starting with Alderman Bingle. Alderman Bingle? Yes. Alderwoman Harris? Yes. Alderman Astor? Yes. Mayor Outlaw? Yes. Alderman Kinsey? Yes. Alderman Best? Yes. Alderman Odom? Yes. Motion carries. Let's go to appointments, starting with Alderman Bengal. None tonight, sir. Alderwoman Harris? None tonight. Alderman Astor? None tonight, sir. Okay, I'd like to appoint Jeffrey Odom, Alderman Odom, to the TDA board. Second. Is there further discussion? All in favor of the motion, say aye. 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 All opposed, same. Uh, let's see. So. Alderman Kinsey. None tonight. Alderman Bass. None, Mayor sir. Pro Tem Bass. Did a great job. None, sir. And uh, Alderman Odom. None, sir. Okay. Attorney's report. No report tonight, city manager's report. Things, Mayor. Uh, the city hall courtroom is not going to be available for our May 25th board meeting, so there's a motion. We discussed this at the uh, work session. Motion is needed by the board uh, that that is uh, needed to move the meeting to the West Newman Recreation Center uh, so that we can hold your official board meeting on the 25th of May. Mayor, I'd like to make a motion that we hold our May 25th Board of Aldermen regular meeting at the West Newburn Recreation Center starting at 6 p.m. Second. second. Motion second. Is there a discussion? All in favor of the motion say aye. 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 All opposed, same. Next item, Mayor, is... Uh, um, I just wanted to inform the board that there is some guidance that's being issued regarding the uh, recovery uh, money. Uh, we've discussed that. I think Mr. Woods kind of uh, alluded to it a little bit earlier, $6.5 million. 3.25 of that is going to be coming this May, 3.25 next May. Uh, but ultimately, there's some information that is being uh, kind of handed down as far as some guidance. So she plans on uh, updating the board with that guidance at the May 20. Uh, fifth meeting, I think, is our next board meeting. So uh, she plans on doing a presentation on that. It's already on our pre-agenda, so we'll be discussing that tomorrow at our pre-agenda meeting of staff, and then ultimately you'll see that on the agenda as well. Uh, secondly, another item that she's going to have on there, Mayor, uh, near and dear to your heart as you bring up every year during audit is our OPEB liability. Uh, so that uh, is something that's going to be coming up. Uh, it's a, a request for the board to consider funding um, a certain portion of whatever remains that would be going into the general fund balance at the end of the year, uh, a certain portion of that savings goes into the OPEB liability fund. So uh, kind of a, uh, uh, an, an opportunity for us to start eating away a little bit at that uh, liability that we show on our balance sheet every single year when we have our audit done. So uh, those are two items that will be coming up at your next board meeting. And finally, um, something that uh, has been provided to you, there's some information in front of you. This is a packet of information from Melanie Ray uh, at the elections. Uh, and uh, also there's some information that has been issued uh, with regards to Senate Bill 51, uh, some potential action at the state level, as well as some resolutions uh, for you to consider uh, that other municipalities are doing uh, with regards to your upcoming elections. It's going to be very prudent and important for y'all to take action on that relatively quickly because um, technically filing starts in July because you haven't taken any action. Uh, so whenever you do, need to, you do need to take that action, if the state's not going to, uh, we'll need to submit that as a local bill and we're starting to run up on deadlines as far as getting things like that submitted if, uh, if we're not already a little bit behind. So uh, my advice to you is to uh, very 
closely look at this packet of information and then uh, come to that May 25th meeting ready to take some kind of action because it's probably pretty important uh, for y'all to get that calendared uh, it, at the state level or it is our hopes that maybe something will be done uh, at the state level in between, but you need to be prepared to take action if not. So. Mr. Dex, what would be, what would be your um, legal opinion of the board going ahead with the regular elections that state hadn't taken any action and knowing that um, the Justice Department could come back and say two of your wards were not properly yes, sir. We, we, yes, sir. vetted, vetted, Yes, sir. We, we, we know now factually that our wards will not be um, properly adjusted. Um, we know that. So um, we can't legally hold an election based on the current wards. Um, and is that your legal opinion or did you read that somewhere? That's okay. from staff. That's what I'm understanding from staff and the preliminary census data and just looking generally at our growth, just commonsensically looking at where our growth lies, we're going to have to make some adjustments. And the, uh, the, what would happen if by chance we went ahead with the regular elections and did not wait for that census information, we could have our uh, election contested at least by a couple of wards or something? Yes, if, sir. Which, is, we, which uh, has happened to New Bern uh, historically. You, sir? That has actually happened in New Bern uh, decades ago. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. Mm -hmm. um, anything else? Um, let's go to new business. Yes. Follow up on what you're saying. So, so I have understanding. If the state hasn't done anything, right? And we have elections, obviously we know ethically, we have growth, there is no, you know, it's not done yet. What would be the step that we would need to take based on what the city manager was saying that we're going to make a resolution to have our election next year or, and yeah, that right. has to be sent up to the state. So what, what is the action that we would need to take as a board? Right, there, there are three possibilities. Best case scenario, the legislature gives us, gives the city cities in North Carolina, the option as to, as to how to stage an election next year mm -hmm. for those cities that are not going to be in compliance, which are going to be most of them. Mm -hmm. That's best case scenario. Next scenario is the city requests a local bill to conduct the election next year on the terms that New Bern would like, meaning what date, what months do you okay. want to have the election in? If none of that happens, we are gonna be left with a scenario where people are gonna to have to um, elect to run for office in July. And then when the census data comes out late summer, we will scramble to readjust the ward boundaries and accommodate the candidates that have filed to run to make sure that they stay in the ward that they live in mm. while we adjust the boundaries to bring them into compliance. Gotcha. That's our worst case scenario. Mm -hmm. Possible but challenging. I'm hoping the state will give us options. We could go ahead though. I have, I have a couple concerns. One, um, Friday is crossover mm -hmm. at the legislature, which would be very difficult for us to make, of course. So we would have to attach to an already existing bill that's right. already there. Wilson, I think they gave us an example, something else. So right. <laughs> I guess what we need to know is what are the options that they're doing? It's either March because there's some thought process that there may be statewide primaries in March and we could jump on that bandwagon with runoff in July. Then we would need to determine when our new start date when the new board would be seated. So right. Step two would be May. There's a potential that the primary could be in May right. with a July runoff in 22. I, these are the scenarios I think we, and we need to see which flavor. Or right. we as a board say, okay, we're just gonna wait, we're gonna file next July, have our election in October, and this board essentially serves five years, the next board serves three years, because is that correct that they still have to stay on the four-year term? Even though we didn't have, if we don't have an election in 21, right. we still have to have an election in 25, four Co years correct. later. Correct. The, the okay. current state statute establishes local government elections on odd years. On odd years, unless we change it. Correct. All right. 
So I, I think that's what would be helpful to all of us is to see the flavors, you know, basically one from column A, one from column sure, B. Sure. I hate to explain it that way, but. No, I, I agree. I think and I'm pretty sure we all agree that we want it to be equitable. So yes, absolutely. It's got to be redistricted. So it makes sense logically. We're not going to be able to have an election this year if we're going to be fair to everybody that wants to run. So understanding what we can do for next year, right. I agree. You know, and to the last part, if we were to do as if we did now, and the other board has three, they can come in and ask for their term to be adjusted, like to we were trying year. to do. Exactly. Right. So we just need to get through this election, this year, and figure out what we need to do. So you're saying on the 25th, we need to make that determination on that. If, yes, if not sooner. Because as Alderman Bingo points out, we're really going to be left with, by then, tagging on to someone else's game plan. Yeah, we can't make our own. Really, at this point, we cannot make our own bill. No. We are too late to make our own bill. So we are going to have to tag on to another city's bill. We could tag on to Trent Woods, who, <laughs> here's my song, you know, for us to go to the even year and just move to a November even year election and then it costs us $5,000. You know I'm a big fan of that. But anyway, though, and I would like to see those options. What are the bills we're gonna tag on to? Um, I believe Wilson was in here and I can't think of the other city that was included. Was it Rocky Mount? Or was, I know it was Wilson. No, um, Jackson Jacksonville. Jacksonville, that's so what is it was. The, so is there an option for us to say, boom, we're not having an election this year because of the information based on statistics, not that we're doing this ourselves, and then we move forward as just having a regular election next year? That could be a That's possible yeah. if there's a bill out there that does that, and I would expect there to be. To have a normal election next year. Yeah, uh, we just do, have to find Do you feel confident bill, that the census information will be in by July? No, sir. No. Or, no, so I mean, they're thinking I'm, I'm, end of September. Yeah, I'm hearing August, September is what I'm, is what I'm hearing. And again, that's just for Okay, are you comfortable to be in by September? No, sir. Well, then, see, we'd be derelict in our duties not going to have a regular election if we're going to be, it's going to be dragged out two, three years. That's what, that's what I'm trying to understand here. I'd, so. I'd really go ahead and have it. And, look, and I mean, I think the Justice Department would have to be a little, may a culp on that with us that, um, I mean, I, but I don't want, it to not be equitable to those wards either right. if there's been a lot of changes. So I don't know. Um, <clears throat> is there good, right? Is, so is, are we able to get Melanie here to have a better understanding on the 25th or? Well, I think, is it possible to reach out to somebody in the legislature? Because that's where we would find out what options are available to us based on the bills already submitted. We, we, that that's what we can do is okay. just try to get the laundry list of all the flavors that are kicking around the state. Okay. And then is the 25th fast enough or do we need to have a special call meeting? I'll let you know. Okay. I'll, I'll try to reach out tomorrow and see, okay. what, and see what I can find out okay. and let everybody know. Awesome. Okay, anything else? Uh, let's go to new business, Alderman, Alderman Bingle. Uh, yes. Um, <coughs> gas situation. <laughs> uh, where is he, Mr. Childs? Um, do you want to just come and address it for our citizens to know about what our city situation is. I mean, we can't help what the private sector is going on, but it would be good if you would just address to our citizens what's going on sit in the city. Yes, from our vendors, um, what we're hearing is, as of right now, we're expecting a shipment in tomorrow. It is scheduled, and that I cannot guarantee when that schedule will be fulfilled, but that's what we're anticipating. Right now, we have gone to more of a conservative stance uh, the departments are not performing some of their daily just maintenance issues and they're trying to conserve fuel so we will have some set aside in case there is an emergency but as day to day it evolves and we hear from our vendor we're anticipating that we should have some some more news after this first shipment of fuel that should resupply us and let us open our pumps to, to all of our all of our employees and the county for a period of time and then we may have to go back and and start restricting our, our usage a little bit so currently all of our employees including our police department and fire department are having to seek fuel elsewhere we, we have we have advised all of our departments to fuel off-site and though it has been inconvenient it has been been available okay. thank you that's all I have sir George so the sheriff department and COTS 
they're receiving fuel elsewhere as well? They had been refueling off-site and they requested that we open up what we have in an agreement with them, which was 45% of what we had on standby at the city garage, which actually accounted for 13,500 gallons as of today that we could allot to them. Now with the shipment scheduled to come in this evening, we're hoping to be able to accommodate more usage uh, once we get that tanker in. Okay, Alder Woman Harris. Add to that that um, the governor has done a state of emergency, so everyone watching, it's you know how the pandemic with the water and the toilet paper, we all have to kind of be cautious and understand that everybody needs gas. So only get what you need. Don't bulk up on it because they're already having people do that um, locally. So just you know everybody needs gas to get to work and and do what they need to do. Um, for my new business, um, I also just wanted to inform residents that uh, the governor has set aside 3.2 billion money uh, monies for um, to deal with um, monthly internet bills. So that opens up on May 12th for you to apply. They're going to get $50 a month, and they also are giving $100 towards the purchase of a computer. All of that information is on um, the governor.northcarolina.gov it's also posted on my facebook and i'm sure i can send it to colleen and she can post it but it, oh you she got it perfect and then the other thing that i wanted to say is i know that we still need to have that meeting in regards to um our wonderful director and and how finance director and how we're going to utilize um trying to figure out some of these projects um because we all got a letter that we received from the Pembroke community. Um, and this a lot of requests coming from all sides of the city. And um, I definitely know that in the past years before I was even thought of that at, at the time when we were doing budgets for the city, each ward had allocated money. And that alderman was responsible for utilizing that money legally in that ward for projects. And I think with all of the requests that come through, even if it's a trial and error with not trial and error but with funds coming in from the uh, american rescue that we go back to a system when it comes to budgeting where each individual ward has a, a, a pot of money that 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 alderman is responsible for when it deals with projects if this community is asking for a, um, a sidewalk or something i feel we need to get to that point so that we're able to allocate so when you have um, individuals that come up and it's something that we can assist with legally that we're able to do that and we we all have funds that account, um, allocated I don't know how you guys feel about that but I just think that with 3.2 million coming in if we all had two hundred and fifty thousand dollars allocated to each ward to be able to do projects and things I think that helps the community because we're specifically in our wards so you know what's best you know what I'm saying in regards to things that may need may need to be done outside of projects and funding that we already do I just think that that would be a great idea it's out on the table for discussion I don't know how everybody else feels but I think that can sometimes alleviate a lot of the go ahead uh, Alderman Harris, I agree with you somewhat about that but I would want if that was the case for each ward will receive a certain amount of money I would say like if there was no issues or problems that I was experiencing right at the time in my ward that I would have that opportunity to give that um, monies over to Alderman Astor if there were some problems in his ward that he could use that, that funding. So I think that's a great idea, but that's a lot of uh, discussions that I think that we need to have on that topic, but I do agree with that. That was something that I was thinking about myself, and you hit, you know, you mentioned it. So, I mean, then again, too, before I'm done, I'm also going to ask again if, with funding, however we can figure it out, we need a, um, a homeowner's repair outside of the the CDDB, CBDG funds, CDBG funds for individuals that are living in areas where their homes need to be fixed and they may not meet a certain criteria, but may be able to meet a criteria that we create. Um, 
in regards to that affordable housing and dealing with the house houses that are already here that need to be repaired and again like the Pembroke community said we they, we need help in that community in regards to um, the community center everybody deserves to have a community center it is a nonprofit I feel like it's a responsibility of the city to figure out how we can partner with them to get that building to where it needs to be there's grants I know that we need to find grants but there still should be a partnership if there could be some sort of matching going on that community is part of the city they want a functioning building they are raising funds all, all the time but people need help that is what we're here for and that's what we should be doing is making sure that we're helping everybody and that's all i have okay alderman astor i would like to if i told you did you get a chance to make any comments before i got here yes. well great i just want to lift up there's so many things happening in newburn but i'm so excited about what all father's got going on here and uh we look forward to being part of it with you and uh Please stay in touch so we can help you with that. And thank you. How are you doing? Alderman Kinsey. Not tonight, sir. Alderman Bess. Yes, I, I want to piggyback off of what you said, Alderman Harris, about the CDBDG funding, because I, you know, asked that question when Amanda was giving one of her presentations back in, I guess, January or February, about having some of that, that funding go to the individuals, like you said, that's not in the redevelopment commission area um, to help rehabilitate their homes if there's any problems. And I don't know at what point if that has even been thought about or discussed with um, Jeff and his staff or not, but um, that's something that I think that we need to look dive a little deeper into because we do have individuals outside of the redevelopment commission in our city that do need help. Yes. Program that that is housed with the city because even like I said, Mike from Habitat is willing to be a partner with mm -hmm. when it when it comes to in kind donation of that labor and in um, volunteerism hours that are needed. Like we're about affordable housing. I know we all believe in affordable housing, but that's we have past, present, and future, and we have every different level that we're working on and dealing with the individuals that need their houses fixed now that may not have the insurance or are on fixed income, but may not meet the criteria for the CDBG, we need to figure out a way to be able to assist them. So that's all I have, Mayor. Okay, <clears throat> Alderman Odom. Nothing tonight, sir. Do we need a closed session tonight? Uh, yes, sir, Mayor. We need you in a closed session uh, pursuant to 143-13-11-A-6 um, to discuss a personnel matter. Scott, can we add the um, discussion of we can't. Okay. All right. So okay. moved. Um, I just want to take just a minute to um, thank Mark Stevens for his service to our city. I know this is your last meeting with us as a board, and I think it would be remiss for all of us if we didn't say thank you to you for your service. And um, I, I'm sure the others would agree with me that we wish you and your family nothing but the best in your future endeavors and I just wanted to publicly state that. Did we get a second to your motion? Make I'll your state. Oh, okay, we have a motion and second. Uh, all in favor of the motion say aye. 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 All opposed, same.